Hello and welcome to another brand new episode of Generation. Today we are going to meet up with a very hard-working and dynamic woman, Sanjirma Altonhoyek. Her main profession is English and Mongolian language teacher. Currently, she is working as an English language teacher at the Mongolian National University of Education. Apart from work, she is an active member of the Women for Change non-governmental organization. Hello, my name is Sanjirma. I'm, an, I'm a member of Women for Change NGO and I also am an English language lecturer. So um, thanks for having me in your program Generation. And you are, as in the program, you are supposed to spend the whole day with me. So please follow me. This morning we find Sanjirma at the CrossFit club in the center of Ulaanbaatar. In the morning she does CrossFit exercises. Please tell us about your morning routine. Uh, my typical day usually starts from this CrossFit uh, center. So this center is called 976. So uh, I get up at around 5 a.m. in the morning and then our uh, training starts at 6. And then usually our trainer, our uh, trainer, Ondraspat uh, Baksh, he collects us and describes all the activities that we are going to do within an hour. And he shows us and he guides the new uh, newcomers. And yeah, so this is how we usually do. How often do you exercise at the CrossFit club? Uh, I usually uh, come here three times a week, so yeah, on odd working days, so Monday, Wednesday and Friday. When she was a child, she was very talkative and outgoing. Crossfit exercises are quite short, and she says it improves her fitness. She can easily track her progress, and also she can find like-minded people that are on the same journey. Why I chose uh, CrossFit uh, is because of uh, several factors. Uh, first, it's very high intense, it includes high intense activities, and also I love the community here. And uh, thirdly, it also starts early in the morning before traffic jam, so that I can manage to do all the exercises before my work. What energy do you receive from doing those CrossFit exercises? Like in the beginning, it was very hard to at least imagine doing all these exercises. As soon as you start doing them, uh, you get uh, the, the activities, the exercises are quite challenging, but still if they are quite doable. If the instructor tells us how to do it properly and how to do it not to, you know, burn yourself, um, burn yourself out. What kind of sports are you interested in? Besides CrossFit, I like playing soft tennis and I also like swimming, actually. So these are the types of sports I like. If we can include horse riding, definitely I'm into that. So our, ex like our training is about to start, so our instructor is showing us how to do the today's exercises. Uh, so I'm about to head to start my training and please stay with me. So I have just finished with CrossFit. I feel so energetic right now. So now we are going to Mongolian National University of Education, where I work. So you will meet uh, my students uh, and you'll see how I teach my class. My name is Sanjirma. I, I used to teach some of the students here in the classroom that recognize me. Uh, I used to teach them writing, right? And speaking practice, writing practice and speaking practice. Her goal over the next three years is to defend and earn PhD degree in education. She graduated as a Mongolian and English language teacher from the Mongolian National University of Education in 2013. And she studied for her master degree educational assessment and evaluation and graduated with merit in Moscow in 2019. How long have you been working as a teacher at the Mongolian National University of Education? 
So here we are at the university where we are about to enter the classroom uh, where I will be teaching uh, today's reading class for future English language teachers. And there are third year university uh, students and I have been working uh, at Mongolian National University of Education since, um, since graduating my uh, master's program in educational technology. Um, and uh, for the last two years, I have been uh, working for this department of English language methodology uh, department. And also this is the area I'm doing research now. What is the gender ratio at the Mongolian National University of Education? I can tell from my perspective, from my experience and from my view, in terms of our university. So our university is the leading and the biggest uh, university that trains teachers of Mongolia. And usually the gender ratio is quite different depending on the profession. Usually kindergarten, preschool or primary school teachers be, are highly likely to be uh, female students, you know, attend the students who are uh, choosing this profession. And as for our uh, institute, which is called Institute of Foreign Languages, as you can see, the majority are the, girl, uh, are the girls or the female students. You have experience of studying in Russia. What are the different issues related to gender equality or equal gender participation in Russia compared to Mongolia? Rather than differences, I would say I found many similarities between uh, Russia and Mongolia. So the majority of uh, the students in the, at universities are female and uh, less likely male uh, students would go and become teachers unless it's uh, science or physical education. So. Yeah, in my experience, I have attended all the time uh, in, in language schools within the universities. So I could say, I could tell from that perspective that most of the teachers are females. And, and they are still, the, the good thing is uh, as soon as they finish, they keep working as teachers in regional uh, or in local or in um, city um, schools. Her next destination is the Women for Change non-governmental organization, where she's going to work. Let's go together and see her work in the environment. It's afternoon already, so we are at the Women for Change NGO's office, and I'm going to briefly describe you our organization and our activities that we do, we did in the past and we are working on. Uh, so I have joined Women for Change in 2013 as a student. So and since then I have been active member uh, of this organization. As you can see, this is our beautiful office that is filled with all the activities that we have organized so far. So this banner shows the um, the leadership dialogue series. We have organized it. For, the, for four summers and we gathered a lot of young women and we discussed our, uh, how to say, uh, gender-based, uh, gender equality and political involvement and many more important issues in these sessions, as you can see. Uh, we had very important guests even. So let's move to the next part. Uh, these are our main characters of our comic book that we designed specifically to promote political leadership uh, among women. Uh, women. So we have already printed out and published three comics in total and it's in public. So welcome to read it anytime. Did you know the Women for Change NGO was established in 2010 by four Mongolian women who shared a passion for the promotion of gender equality, human rights and democracy, values that continue to underpin their work today. Their goal is to support, empower and advocate for women and young people in Mongolia. 
they believe in the power of social change in encouraging personal development through increasing awareness of gender discrimination and in supporting women in their quest for knowledge, confidence, and self-determination. What responsibilities do you have as a member of the Women for Change NGO? As I mentioned uh, earlier, I have joined Women for Change in 2013 and I have been an active member since then and I have attended and participated uh, in many, many uh, beautiful and productive, I would say, uh, events and projects. Currently, I'm an active member uh, so I don't ho hold any uh, positions full-time, but I can uh, commit my time and my energy, my skills to any projects that I'm quite eager to participate in. And uh, it's very, uh, I would say in our office, in our, as our NGO, we are very uh, liberal in terms of anyone can join, anyone can leave. Uh, we, uh, Women are from def different spheres and sectors even. I'm a teacher, some are lawyers, some are political scientists and stuff, and other many more. So we somehow unite and we contribute our skills and education and everything we have just to make the things work. And uh, most of the projects that I have been involved in were very, um, how to say innovative, I would say, uh, that were not happening in Mongolia before. So it was it, uh, also as, as a challenge as a team for us to, to make it happen. And uh, not, on the other hand, we gained, I feel like I gained a lot of skills during, um, during these projects. She worked as a secretary of the Youth International Forum and organized body image workshops, movie discussions with the public and youth parliamentary elections, and she has been honored to represent the organization abroad such as in Vietnam, El Salvador and Kyrgyzstan. So the reason why I work and still part of uh, uh, Women for Change uh, is the is the network and is the team and its main core values, I would say, and also its mission. Its mission is uh, um, very universal, I would say, and the mission serves um, every person uh, in Mongolia. It uh, affects every citizen in Mongolia. So that's why I think it's very crucial. I still uh, I, I have this sense of belonging all the time to Women for Change because everything that has been designed or set and implemented makes a big difference in the society. What is the most challenging thing you have experienced while working here at the Women for Change NGO? Uh, personally, uh, I think working and being a member uh, of this organization taught me uh, to be calm and to embrace the uncertainty, to act somehow in uncertain situations. Because all the projects and all the activities, even repeatedly, or even um, the, the frequency also was repeated again, uh, it never been the same. So all the time the activities, the projects had to be, um, how to say, implemented in different ways. You know, many things can occur during the implementation. So um, maybe dealing and embracing, how to say, uncertainty confidently, because you have a very strong team behind, you have very um, trustworthy people around you and you also have to have to say uh, obliged to be so so this is a very how to say strong um, and powerful community and the team i would say that uh, that you can rely on and also um, you have um, have to act also in that way so i would say um, 
working in uncertain situations. That was a uh, very challenging because as a I um, joined this organization when I was only I would say 18 or 19. I was so young. I was so inexperienced, and all these activities that we have done together um, taught we from the scratch. I could uh, see and I could um, be part of every stage and I could uh, feel accomplished. Uh, I would feel accomplished and also proud of myself and also of my team that we have done. St. Germain's busy day is behind her. Many people have favorite way to relax after a long stressful day. St. Germain likes to go to a coffee shop. How do you cope and deal with stress and difficult times? Do you have a particular role model? So now we are at a cafe nearby our Women for Change office and uh, I like to uh, take a break, a little break for my, and be with myself and uh, to, you know, to continue planning the next activities uh, that uh, are left um, during the re like for the rest of the day, and also to do some reflection alone. Uh, and yeah, so um, I was asked to tell about my goals for the next ten years. Uh, for the next ten years, probably I would have defended hopefully my PhD um, degree. Uh, I would have defend a PhD dissertation and receive this uh, honorable uh, degree and I hope I would contribute, keep contributing along with my community, with my friends, colleagues um, to address these social issues uh, that are related to women, children and whole nation. Thank you, St. Germain, for sharing your day with us. What advice would you like to give to the younger generation? So, what advice would I give to, my, to the younger generation is to be confident, to be present. Uh, and um, some things uh, occur, uh, some things um, can be understood um, later. So, no need to be... Uh, no to be uh, there is no need to be hard on yourself and no need to rush into things. So um, I think be present at the moment. So uh, I think that's why we uh, created this design, this comics for people to be confident and also uh, to have belief in them that they have uh, power in themselves. and. Uh, for example, the last comics, it's called Shidit uh, uh, So it's about uh, a young woman who is uh, identifying some issues that are uh, happening around her, that are, um, exist around her. And then she finds some solutions and she addresses them. She um, collects and uh, unites local women's voices and confidently well, this is where this episode of Generation comes to an end. Today, we had the chance to meet a hardworking and dynamic activist. Our guest taught us how important it is to be patient and never give up. Thank you for being with us. Mm -hmm.